Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wishing you a happy and healthy start to this nice little Sunday morning over here from actually a kind of bright uh, and sunny Helsinki, Finland, although cold as <laughs> cold as it gets, in fact. Anyways, I got my morning walk in, got a little bit of coffee in me, and also some good eggs in this morning, so I'm feeling nice and well and well rested. And we got plenty to talk about today uh, with short-term time for analysis, and then obviously we'll prepare for the next week to come, of course, as well. Now, I do want to say I'm going to upload another video later that's going to be only very long-term analysis, but I want to keep these kind of separate because otherwise, videos get too long and also some people you know don't care about that i mean i imagine most people who are actually trading you don't give a fuck about like what to expect in the next half year to a year i mean it's interesting right but it's not like relevant um anyways other than that i do want to let you know that i have actually put a link to my personal instagram in the description of this channel uh the reason being is because there's someone who's been like impersonating my account trying to dm people basically trying to get like their financial details or whatever whatever nefarious purposes i don't necessarily know what it is but look the general rule is is that if it sounds too good to be true it probably is and look i have no interest in trading anyone else's account other than my own and um and and so yes if you're not getting a dm from the link that you see in the description it's definitely not me i can assure you of that and then also i should let you know that also in the description we do have a uh, a link to femex exchange they are offering up a pretty actually large deposit bonus 3600 i do believe please understand look if you're not already successful with trading it's not gonna be wise to do this in fact i'd strongly suggest hey you know i'm not your dad but don't don't do it man like the only reason why they are offering that is because they know that they are probably going to end up on top so you know if you are already a successful trader then hey you can probably take advantage of it you know not with any like major issues uh, but if you're not understand that this, this is like not it's not a good thing to get into in fact i think that most people probably should should not be leverage trading or trading at all for that matter most people are better off hodling and honestly you know the the best long-term gains are typically going to be had from that with a little bit of a strategy for like you want to actually exit right that's where hodlers typically go wrong anyways i'll get off that topic right now let's get into the crown chat uh crown trading application over here which we found at app uh, app.crownchain.net i don't want to go through the full rigmarole but there are several things that are rather interesting right here free fear and green index has balanced off of the 34 level which was technically a little bit fearful now to a 43 which is in my opinion more or less neutral but that is interesting because we don't expect to stay too fearful for too long without you know actually bouncing it is kind of the opposite uh, on the other end with getting greedy you know you can typically stay more greedy for a longer period of time than fearful while whilst putting in highs anyways over here very very interesting things going on right now global funding rates are pretty much you know pretty much zero zero percent that is now this isn't this is an average obviously and uh, and that does imply that several exchanges are going to be actually negative rates. And if they're negative rates, that means that you're actually getting paid to hold your long positions right there. Um, and of course, the ones that are you know still positive, it's minimal. So financing is very very low right now. If not uh, if if not that, then you're actually getting paid to hold your longs on a lot of those exchanges. So do be aware of that, as that does kind of imply that we probably are looking at, as we did say over the last few days here, a bottoming area at least for a daily. I'm not calling like a macro low right now. I think that's not appropriate. But I do think that we have a low in right now. And what do you know? It happens around the 19th, 20th, and 21st of the month. Crazy, fucking crazy, huh? Anyways, global leverage ratio is is doing what coming down the most significant that it has been in like the last week or so still is way the fuck up there alongside global open interest which is starting to come down quite significantly here uh more a little bit more than two billion from our current highs alongside uh bitcoin exchanges reserves are you know come or the exchange the, the exchange reserves are just you know continuing with their downtrend so i think that these datas are starting to become a little bit more of a meme uh, i see them like really perpetuated across the crypto twitter and crypto you know youtube uh sphere they do matter yes but at the end of the day looking at these things are completely like incomplete without actually having price points for where they become actionable and you know with with all of this in mind here it does suggest that shorts are going to be a little more aggressive on the market sell button which does mean that there is going to be a pain point but as we saw last week we saw a similar setup right but without actually initiating above those pain points they're not actionable and that's really where i want to differentiate the channel like this instead of just parenting you know the same shit that you probably hear all the all across the land and that's not to say that other people, you know, don't have useful information. Of course they do. We all have a unique take on the market. We're all unique snowflakes. But, <laughs> but it still needs a fucking. It still needs. It still needs some sort of level where that comes to fruition. So let's get into it right now. Starting off over here with our short-term time frames, and I want to follow up from yesterday. So yesterday we did say short-term, very likely a little bit of a pullback here. We did get a little bit of a pullback right there. I thought it could come down a little bit lower than that, but fair enough is fair enough. The main idea was after a short-term pullback, very likely a bounce, and in this case we're getting and actually still following my LARP lines right here not that these are like hard rules obviously and to be fair remember that cme did close the week out at 59,000. uh sorry not 50 57,900 dyslexia coming back up again 
So is it likely that we kind of hang around this region until uh, CME open a little bit later today? Probably yes, or, or, or maybe even tomorrow uh, for New York Stock Exchange open. Until then, though, you know, if you do want to play the ranges, it's actually rather simple right here, below about 58,500. I would be looking for another retest around that region because remember that CME has about a $300, $400 premium over spot price action. So, you know, coming back down to 57.5 around the time of CME open would actually fill that gap. I mean, just for reference right here, you can see where we closed. Um, again, kind of in a precarious place, but fair enough. But I wouldn't look at that as actual until we really officially close, even like an hourly delta below about 58,500, let's call it. Um, and, and realistically, I don't feel too compelled by weekend price action to begin with. I'm really waiting for like the actual weekend uh, to end and the real trading to begin. Anyways, um, for what it's worth right now, until that happens, you know, consolidating obviously above 58,500 is going to be another higher low in it, in the context of a short term uptrend right here on the hourly. I believe the buy hourly has the same thing as well. Yep, we got a higher low right there and a higher high right there. Good. What about a three hour? Are we doing the same? thing yes what about a four hour uh yeah not not quite there just yet on a four hour here's the thing though i do think that bitcoin very likely does uh does trade up this week now would i be calling a full-on um reversal you know <laughs> on a daily no i do think that regardless of whether you're bullish or bearish we do you know we do have a nice low in right here does it get retested again maybe upon uh cme open you know maybe back down to 56.5 or maybe even 55.5 possible yes but ultimately i don't think that bitcoin is going to be closing lower on a higher term time frame before actually playing out a bit of a bounce here but remember bounces are just that until proven otherwise right now as we are operating on lower highs of course and if we go over to a fresh chart right here let me see is this one fresh yeah it is fresh um you know this setup is still very very similar to what we saw back in uh, may actually may april of last year where bitcoin was in an uptrend you know here's your last uh, higher low right here and then put in your high and then you come all the way back down on that shattering move you get your first bounce and then your lower high right there so that is your confirmation of a downtrend as you do have a lower low and a lower high of course we did see this move coming around the 618 Fibonacci retracement, which is, you know, kind of a, uh, a, a very normal bearish uh, lower high right there after the reversal. And we're kind of, at least at least for myself, I do have to be looking at this price action over here as well, likely doing that first before anything else, of course. Now, am I am I bearish on like the very high term time frames? No, I, I, I don't think that this market site, I think that either this market cycle literally ended on the $69,000 high right here. I think it's unlikely or we do it, which I think is a lot more likely uh, see this mark cycle be much more long uh, than I think many people are expecting. I think at minimum ends in like April, May, um, and at maximum ends maybe like September, October of this of, of this coming year. For all the people, or for all the analysis that I've seen with people calling the high in advance at uh, in December for whatever reason, I've seen nothing compelling to be quite honest with you. And I've actually viewed quite a few of them just to see if I'm missing something. And and perhaps I am. You know, it's certainly possible. I mean, I'm not fucking perfect, obviously, but at the same time, I <laughs> I've no reason to really put much faith uh at least on that i think that that's very misguided to be quite honest with you and i'll actually put in out a video a little bit later that will go over that um with detail and data and then of course you can you know make the decision for yourself but when i'm looking at statistics when i'm looking at data it's just that's <laughs> it's just not fucking relevant at least at least from what i'm looking at right now anyways okay cool so have we gotten through the lower term time frames just yet kind of yes but where would i be looking for another drive up to about sixty thousand five hundred, maybe even all, maybe even as much as sixty one thousand five hundred right here well if we do get the uh not the yellow but the cyan nine exponential moon average cross into the upside of the yellow 21 exponential moon average i would be looking for a move at minimum to about sixty thousand bucks or sorry sixty thousand five hundred or so um, and I can actually forecast this move right here. Not necessarily that uh, it's relevant for this next closure, as this will naturally change with each and every passing closure. But hey, if we were to close above 60,300 on this next closure, then yeah, it actually would cross. So probably not going to happen on this next closure, maybe uh, maybe earliest, like later today. Um, but uh, you can actually forecast this with Caretaker's uh, moving average crossover levels. Absolutely love fucking Caretaker as he has all these tools. And by the way, they are free as well. So until then, you know, short term time frames, uh, as we went over, uh, you know, there are a few more fundamental things that are a little bit more uh, gearing towards the downside, namely, namely because CME did close at about 57.9. Um, but in this case right here, until we actually do break below our current low side structure, even on a fucking hourly, I don't, I don't think that's too relevant. Anyways, momentum also is over here. What are we looking at? Um, whoops, let's maybe skip the 12 hour for now. But hourly right here is actually going to be flipping back up above 59.250. So, mm, I mean, it is within striking distance, but probably not too likely on this next closure. Although we do have this trend line coming in right here. So that'd be the bit of a hoping right there. How much do I trust this over the weekend? Not much. Uh, buy hourly, what do we see right here? Heavy down as long as below 59.750. Uh, Three hour is... 
heavy down as long as below 59.5 four hour is going to be freshly crossing down below 58,000 bucks so you know do i think it's a lot more likely that bitcoin does actually uh, test around the weekend lows yet again probably yeah you know you do have momentum plus of course uh plus of course cme closure anyways um the medium term time frames are completely different of course the 12 hour is actually freshly costing up and will remain with upside portion as long as above 56,350 so keep in mind that bitcoin you know could play at a pullback somewhere down maybe 57.5 or 56,500 as well but i would actually still be looking for a bounce around those regions again i, I stick with what i've been saying in the sense that i do not believe that bitcoin's going to be closing a higher term time frame uh lower low without you know, bouncing somewhat significantly here first, regardless of whether you're bullish or bearish in this case. Uh, daily will also cross back up above 58,750. That would, that would look pretty damn good, actually, alongside rising volatility right here, too. So that is actually a good sign. Anyways, um, okay, so we've gone through all of that. Is there anything over here that we want to go over? I don't see any obvious signals on the hourly. What about the buy hourly? Um, indicators, uh, again, nothing too obvious right there. What about three hour? Come on, show it to me. Uh, again, nothing too obvious right there. Yeah, we did have a drive of hidden bearish divergence, but uh, let's see if it's on the four hour actually. Uh, four hour, show it to me. Yeah, four hour has it as well. So, you know, probably, probably going to be looking for this one to retest around the lows first and then perhaps come in for the bounce uh, to start off this week. Anyways, um, anyways, let's go to the 12 hour right here. Actually, do kind of like that 12 hour, uh, but not seeing anything too obvious. And what about the daily? Yeah, daily same thing based off the uh, based off the green 55 exponential average right here. So again, you know, kind of a likely bounce point. And I think that this is a lot more obvious on CME chart. Like, again, just CME chart is just I think it's just better. <laughs> I think it's just more obvious when you get a signal on CME chart, it's more likely to play out. And yes, this would be a bounce area, especially for the people who took the short off of the 63,500 uh, area that we called out last. I think it was last week. Yeah, it was last week. That was like the big bad area to break, and Bitcoin did it. And well, targets to the downside emerged from there. Anyways, okay. Okay, so we've gotten through all of that now. Um, let's go back to spot price action. And I feel like I'm missing something maybe on the 12 hour or daily right here. Again, 12 hours more indicative of putting a low daily. What do we see right here? Yeah, same thing. Two day, I feel like, where is it? Where is it? Uh, five day. Uh, that's right, we do have a five day close of day. Okay, so let's get into the higher term time frame stuff now as well. So while I do think that Bitcoin is rather likely to bounce here. Oh, and we forgot to do, motherfucker, man. I done goofed it again. All right, so remember how we spoke about uh, this lower high on, on a confirmation of this turning out to be bearish. Probably going to be somewhere between the 0.5 and the 618. Well, now that we do have what would appear to be a local low here, uh, I will plot that up. And you can see that the 0.5 is about 62,000 bucks and the 618 is about 63,650 or so. So as long as we are living below this region right here, um, you know, it is just another lower high. And I would have to be bearish if we see any sort of weakness, uh, especially in this area right here. This would be rather nasty. Um, Again, it's probably going to take its time uh, when you do look at it from this angle over here. It did take about two, uh, sorry, three weeks, a little bit more than three weeks, perhaps from this local low to this local high before continuation to the downside. So again, this is not going to happen all in one day, most likely. But uh, if we were to see, more importantly, a full hour or even an hourly closure, it doesn't even need to be a four hour in this case, an hourly closure above 61,400, just your prior range highs right here where Bitcoin got rejected quite a few times, then I would be looking for actually a leg up all the way to test that region. So will Bitcoin bull law still have a chance here? Yes, absolutely they will. But this next two weeks are absolutely fucking critical for the bull laws. Otherwise, this is, you know, I'm gonna talk about some pretty bearish stuff right now. So get ready. Oh, get ready to dislike this video, baby. Oh man, hold on. Wait, one more bullish thing and then we'll get to the bear stuff. We got the moons. Holy shit. We got the fucking moons. Look at that, baby. Full moon. Or is it the full moon or the new moon? I forget. <laughs> I've consulted with the witches and I've already forgotten. No, we've got the Bula moon right here. That's how you need to know it. And of course, if you actually back test this yourself, you know, the results speak for themselves. And that's really all that I care about. At the end of the day, statistics, there's lies, damn lies, statistics, and uh, the moons have good statistics with them, as you can see. Not going to be perfect, obviously, um, but for the most part, uh, very, very accurate, more than an 85% accuracy over the past year here, in fact. And of course, all of these vertical lines represent around the 20th of the month with, with about one, you know, one day plus or minus around that date. And what do you know? Do we put in another low right here on the 19th? Yeah, and that would actually be relevant for that. So I can just move that uh, to this area right here. And again, just back test it yourself, but I can assure you that all of these vertical bars come in around the 20th, give or take one day from that date. 
And you can see that uh, all of them except for one have been a, uh, uh, you know, a major low and all of them produced, you know, I mean, from those lows to the next high, like a minimum of 25 to 30 percent, which is, you know, rather significant. Or let me actually just check this one out here just to make sure. Yeah, about 20 percent uh, minimum for a lot of these. So if we were to trade up 20 percent from this current region, that would be obviously significant. That actually put Bitcoin basically around uh, around all time high. So that would be the bula hoping right here. And I think it's definitely possible, but I do as a technical and or not necessarily technical analyst because uh, they don't have like skin in the game. But as a trader, I do have to treat anything below that level 63.5 as still a lower high. So until we get back above there for myself personally, I don't hold on to any long term longs. Again, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. You know, you're free to do whatever the fuck you want to do. But uh, but there, you know, there's a hope, and you know, there is some legitimacy to that, obviously. And I do think that Bitcoin again is going to bounce here before anything else. Here's the problem, though: when we go to our higher-term time frames, of which we have a five-day weekly and bi-weekly all closing today. <sighs> Turn your turn your fucking face away. Turn your fucking face away before you start to hate me. I'm warning you right now. Okay, one, two, three drives of bearish divergence on the weekly coming in from our January highs. Of course, our February highs right here. Even a phantom drive from April. And of course, we'd be looking at the same thing right here. Massively lower highs on RSI with higher highs on price action. But that's just the weekly. What about the bi-weekly? No, not the fucking bi-weekly. We have <laughs> Elsa's. She's getting scared over there. She doesn't like yelling. Anyways, uh, 14 hours left to go. It, it closed at the end of the day today. Um, and what do we see right here? Well, if Bitcoin does come from a local high, which this is actually not a local high as it is, if Bitcoin were to close below the last week's, the last bi-weekly low, which is 56,425, 56,425, then this will confirm a local high. And well, we will have, well, one, two, three drops of bear or multiple drops of bear chevron is right there. And the target would be actually down minimum to about 52, 52 and a half thousand to 51,000. Um, if things get really nasty, uh, 40, about 46 and a half to 47,000 in this case, uh, personally speaking, you know, we got a lot of, uh, we got a lot of day left to go and CME over here, you know, did not did yeah did not close below that same level um so fair enough you know that would be another somewhat good thing just barely closed above but fair enough anyways also should be known over here on the bi-weekly we are you know that would be interpreted as a rejection of the topside trolling demand and that one already did close on cme although it didn't close below last week's low just barely above it um if we saw the same thing on spot price action again below about 57.4 that would be pretty damning. Um, personally speaking, I do think Bitcoin would come down to minimum 50,000 bucks after that. And, you know, maybe a little bit lower than that, uh, to be fair. But, you know, looking at it from this angle, I think is rather sombering. Uh, unless if Bitcoin, you know, essentially does pick it up this, especially this next week. And I think maximum two weeks to come here. So plan B targets, I you know, I respect him. Obviously, I think that he gets way too much shit for the, you know, amount of effort and, and, and actual good information that he puts out, but yeah, probably not going to happen this month. Um, not that you need me to really tell you that. Anyways, um, what else did I want to talk about here while we're here? Obviously, the five days closing today as well. That one's going to have a chance to confirm this uh, bearish divergence as well. But, you know, we already got higher term time frames than that closing. So uh, at that, uh, you know, at that point, we do have several uh, several points confluence, especially around that $51,000 level. If I do draw a Fibonacci extension, um, or sorry, Fibonacci retracement. Let's do it on this chart right here. Uh, for the greater scale, not going to include this one because it's not relevant towards what we're talking about. Um, you would see that the 0.5 and the 6.8 are actually, you know, basically bracketed between about 49 and 52. So anywhere between there would kind of be fair game and a legitimate target um, if these get confirmed, actually. Okay, and one last thing here regarding the good old weekly 21 EMA <laughs> Mimi, of course, but uh, it's, a, it's actually a good one. It does have some good history here, obviously. And there's two very important factors with this. Whenever Bitcoin is one above the yellow 21 on the weekly and also so it has a positive slope, but in, in a general general upside bullish market and vice versa for the downside, of course. And right now, what are we doing? Well, we are certainly well above it and it does have a positive slope. So that is good for the long term. But if we were to test around it, well, would that be relevant towards the historical past? The historical past, that's redundant as fuck. Uh, perhaps yes. I mean, we can go back to 2017 run over here, and you can see several retracements down to the 21 throughout this whole cycle. And they all kind of have a similar retracement levels, as we will see very clearly here. This first one, about 22.5%. Uh, this one over here, about 31%. This one over here, about 27%. This one over here, about 27% again. This one over here, about 36.5%. 
this one over here about 33 and some odd change and this one over here doesn't look like much but it is quite a fair bit at 31 and a half percent or so and for what it's worth right now from top to where we currently are trading we do see about a 15 or so percent retracement which is significant of course like it's not anything small especially in you know if you're coming from traditional markets or forex uh however what would you know comparable retracement put us around well from top to current 21 that'd be about a, almost a 25 percent retracement and that's exactly at the 21. Uh, could things wick a little bit lower than that? You know, what would like a 30% retracement look like? Well, about 48,000 bucks. So, you know, if Bitcoin does confirm a local high right here and uh, and we do see the, especially the two week uh, bearish divergence play out, you know, those will be legitimate targets. Um, uh, so again, please do, please do recognize that, you know, there is risk to the downside after a bit of a bounce to the upside here, which I do expect happens over the next week or two. I would still refrain from getting like very bearish on this market. I'm not bearish on this market macro, obviously, as long as we're uh, operating on weekly higher lows, but, uh, could it be that Bitcoin does something more like this, uh, you know, contrary to what many people are thinking right now, um, you know, it could be, you know, coming down all the way here put some okay that's a little bit too low <laughs> could be coming down like all the way over here boom and then you get your higher loan and something like that you get like one massive ascending triangle i mean it's possible you know and that would kind of play into what i'm thinking long term in the sense that uh bitcoin you know very likely is going to have a much more long market cycle and you know everyone's looking for the moonshot right here it doesn't necessarily have to come from right here and it can still be macro bullish obviously so with that, with that in mind, I just want to kind of present that really, really quickly. I'm not saying that that's 100% guaranteed to work out. Of course, you know, that's not even actionable until Bitcoin even takes out like the $44,000 low right there, of course. Um, but, you know, there is a lot at stake, especially over these next couple of weeks. And if Bitcoin does really confirm that next lower high on the daily, um, well, that is a potential scenario here. I would still give, you know, 50000 to 48000 still a chance to bounce. But with all that in mind, I will leave it right there. Uh, but again, short term time frames, you know, I don't really have a strong opinion on this right here. If we get the crossing of the 20, uh, sorry, of the nine above the 21, yeah, I would be looking for a test somewhere around the top side of, you know, 61 to 60, uh, 61 for first. If, uh, if not, if we do take out that, uh, what was it? The hourly last low, I'd probably be looking for a pullback first, probably in line with CME, um, CME uh, close from Friday. And, and my main message today and, and the setup for the week to come is that, look, whether, regardless of whether I'm bullish or bearish right here, I do not think that Bitcoin's going to be closing on new lows before playing out a bounce first. The question is, how high does the bounce get? Does the bounce fail to get above 63.5 in the next couple of weeks? Then, you know, that would be considered weakness and that would be considered obviously a lower high. And I, well, personally, personally, I cannot be bullish off that. And I, I suppose I would be looking towards 50,000, maybe, maybe lower than that over time. If Bitcoin does exceed above it, then yeah, we can talk about, you know, targets towards 75,000, 80,000, 100,000, whatever the fuck, you know, people want to talk about right now. So I think that's going to do it for, for this particular video here. Again, pretty, uh, pretty much a setup for this next week to come. A lot going to be riding on tonight's closures. And I hope that this one serves you. We'll be back on tomorrow with a live stream. With that said, take care and see you soon.